Okay, my loves. I know there are a lot of you that are out there that are really wondering how do I even set boundaries anymore. Maybe you didn't grow up with great boundaries. Maybe boundaries weren't really modeled well for you. Or maybe you were told that you cannot have boundaries. Maybe you're tired of being gaslighted in your relationships and you're tired of feeling crazy all the time and guilty for trying to make a difference in your life. If this is you, then I want you to come schedule a call with me. Let's chat about the Unashamed Image Program. The Unashamed Image Program is geared towards you specifically. I am going to be helping you in our next upcoming session of the Unashamed Image. I am personally going to train you how to not feel crazy when someone is gaslighting you, how to be able to stand your ground, to keep your boundaries intact, and to also see through the bull crap. I am also going to be teaching you how to set really confident boundaries, boundaries that you can really rely on. And I'm going to help you communicate them in a way that really makes sense. Basically, I'm going to help you live a life free of shame and on your terms. If you are ready and you are done feeling all the shame and guilt for trying to set boundaries, if you are not willing to live another moment the way you are right now and in somebody else's shadow, then this is the time to schedule that call with me. It's completely free. No pressure. Just love. Just support. Go to www.erinandersonthetraumacoach.com. Scroll down the page to where it says, let's chat about working together. Click on that button and it'll take you to my booking page. If you're ready to live the unashamed life, schedule that call. Let's get you in the Unashamed Image program, my loves. From my heart to your heart. Bye. Hey, everyone. It's Erin Anderson with the Erin Anderson Betrayal Trauma Coaching. I am super excited that you have tuned in today. Let's get talking about how to heal from betrayal trauma. Welcome to the other side of the struggle. This is a podcast where we talk about trauma how to heal it, and then how to take it and use it to unlock your mission and your potential and to use it to live your very best dream life. When you're dealing with betrayal trauma, it can be hard to know how to heal it, how to stop the pain, and to know what your next steps are to take in your own life. And these are the questions that we try to answer here. Trauma has the ability to rob us of our joy and identity, which is why it's so miserable to experience. But with the right tools and with the right mindset, we can totally reclaim that joy and even use this trauma to strengthen ourselves so that way trauma does not knock us off of our joy again. Living your dream life should be a non-negotiable, but trauma tends to try to negotiate that with you. And even though trauma is not something that we will completely ever be free of in our life, the pain is negotiable. This is why I created Erin Anderson Betrayal Trauma Coaching and this podcast is because I want my listeners, I want my clients to live, truly live free from the prison that trauma can put you in. I want you to live on the other side of the struggle. Hey, 
everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Other Side of the Struggle. I'm super happy you guys are here with me today, especially as we talk about having feelings of being a failure. And uh, part of the reason why this has come up this week is honestly because with my clients, with social media, with a lot of different people that follow me or talk to me, there's actually been kind of a resounding theme of feeling like they failed in some way. And I've noticed that this is actually a very common problem for people who have dealt with betrayal and trauma in general, especially in relationship trauma, uh, from childhood trauma to uh, any kind, actually any type of relationship trauma, uh, marital trauma, right? And the reason being is because um, we tend to want to take some type of control over our lives. And when we're feeling like that control isn't there or we're feeling disorganized or we're feeling out of sorts in some way, it transmutes into feeling like a failure, like we've done something wrong. Um, And so, like, I've heard a lot of people talking about, like, failing in their businesses, failing their kids, failing spouses, neighbors, uh, failing their pets, like, uh, failing their coaches, failing their clients, failing in general. And I I really want to make sure that I, I, I let you guys know how to navigate this and to give you some tools to help you get through this because failure also has or feeling like a failure also can and I shouldn't say can it does lead to um feeling like hopelessness uh the why should I even try um and it can often lead us to making really really bad decisions because we tend to believe that we are nothing but a failure, right? People don't behave above what they believe about themselves. And so if we believe we're a failure, we tend to fail a lot. And we're all about success here. That's what I want to see. Healing is a success opportunity. And so feeling like like taking on the failure identity is really kind of dangerous. And we want to be very careful with that. And so I want to talk about why, like, why do we reach for that when times are struggle, when times are tough, when we're in that struggle? Like, why do we reach for the fail or failure uh, label? Well, number one, it's actually a safety thing. Um, when we're in relationships that bring chronic trauma to us uh, through abuse, gaslighting, neglect. We really want to find a sense of safety. We want our relationships to be safe. We want our environment to be safe. Our brain is wired to keep us safe. And so when something isn't making sense or something becomes confusing and we're not quite sure of of how to navigate things, all of a sudden that feeling of safety kind of gets ripped away from us. And the amygdala switches on and you get immediately into that fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response, right? Um, Because that's our safety mechanisms. And the reason why, like, like it kind of doesn't make sense in a, in a way because we know as adults that uh, we'll be fine to a degree, that we can take care of ourselves, right? But the fear of abandonment is really real. And it starts from infancy. If a, if a baby is abandoned by its family, its mother, its community in general, it won't survive. And so the fear of abandonment is a really real thing because it does to our brain equal death from an early age. 
And so when we're feeling like people are neglecting us or abusing us or uh, gaslighting us or not showing up for us in the very best, most healthy way possible, right? We worry about becoming abandoned. We worry about becoming alone again. And um, we go into this immediate, like, people-pleasing state. And it is something that I see a lot of trauma victims deal with, especially, like, relationship trauma, right? Um, With a physical trauma, uh, there's more of that fight, flight, or freeze type of response but when it's emotional trauma um and relationship trauma we tend to go into the fawn more than anything and again if you remember going into the safety mechanisms right we tend to search for safety by people pleasing like the thought process is well if i just do what they say Maybe they'll finally be happy with me and maybe they will be kinder or leave me alone, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, I I think like this, this often really does stem from some type of childhood trauma. When say like a parent is uh, struggling emotionally with a, with themselves and kids kind of have that ability to trigger us right and i'm not saying it's it's a good thing or a bad thing but kids tend to have the ability to trigger their parents and when you're already trying to deal with a lot of emotional baggage that neediness from your kids can make you feel very very angry and very very crazy because you just know that there's nothing left to give right now. You don't have anything left. And so you want to distance yourself from the need, right? And so when a parent is feeling that way, they tend to maybe yell at the kids, uh, scream at them, maybe say things that they wouldn't necessarily mean. And again, I'm not saying that this is right. I'm just saying that this is kind of what's happening. And so to the child, if this is a consistent problem, a chronic problem to them, they tend to get into this fond response that if I just do everything they ask, maybe they'll finally be happy with me. Maybe I'll get some praise. Maybe I'll get some belonging, right? But the problem with this, and, and I see this also in married couples. I see this in like parents and children, like relationships can get really, really messy sometimes. Um, bosses and employees, that that's a big one actually too. Like an employee doesn't want to lose their job. And so they tend to overdo, overwork, believing that they're going to lose their sense of survival. Um, but the problem with this is it creates like a really negative cycle where um, the person that's doing the abuse finds that they have control over the victim. And that gives them that sense of power. And so they keep triggering the victim to get more out of the victim. And for the victim, though, they're sitting there trying to control their environment and they feel like they have to please their their abuser. And so the cycle continues where the abuser triggers the victim to get something out of them. And the victim allows the trigger, allows themselves to be abused to get something out of the abuser. Right? And I know like a lot of times people don't think about it that way. But it's really a cycle of control. Um, you know, going through my own healing journey, I realized even even though people around me weren't necessarily being emotionally healthy and uh, weren't making really great choices, I realized that a lot of what I did came from a desire to try to control them 
So that way I was no longer getting hurt. I was no longer uh, being the victim. Like I could finally live in peace. I could finally have what I wanted because I viewed the problem as uh, as being outside of me in a sense. And granted, no, they shouldn't be treating you that way. Like, like the people that treat you unfairly or not good should not be treating you that way. But at the same time, you cannot expect someone to treat you better than the way you treat yourself. And I know that sounds harsh, but if I'm allowing somebody to control me by doing everything for them, um, like, for example, I would clean every little piece of my house uh, before somebody came over just to find some type of approval. But instead of approval, I found that they'd find something wrong, right? And I'd go back into the cycle of feeling like I'm not enough. Um, or... You know, I've talked on the the podcast before about, you know, the struggles that my husband's had with um, a pornography problem. And I would try to control all the Internet, control his phone. Uh, I'd scream and yell. I'd make threats, ultimatums, like all those kinds of things. That, that, But it came from a desire to control him so that way I would get a certain outcome. But the problem with this is, is we can only control one person at a time. And if we're too busy trying to control someone else, we are going to feel out of control ourselves. Because we can't control ourselves if we're trying to control someone else. We will feel out of control. And so this is why it's really important to take back our control So how do you feel about boundaries? It's a legitimate question. A lot of people come to me really struggling with this concept. They often feel guilty for setting boundaries or they're not sure about even what a boundary is. You know, they've heard the term, set the boundary, things like that, but that's really confusing for them because it's not something that's well taught in our society nowadays, right? They know that boundaries are really important to having healthy, constructive, supportive, and wonderful relationships, but why? And oftentimes, they also know that they feel like their boundaries are being violated, but they can't quite pinpoint what the boundary is that's being violated. That's why I've created the Clarifying and Creating Your Boundaries free PDF You can find out what your boundaries are, how to tune in to what the boundary needs to be, and how to effectively create and communicate your boundary. So that way you stay in this place that respects you, respects the other person, but also gives you the confidence in your boundaries. So that way you stop being gaslighted, disrespected, and unseen. Having your boundaries really clear gives you a voice and also helps the other person stay in accountability with themselves. So that's not a role that you have to take on anymore. So if you are ready to really have clear boundaries, to really understand what your role is in the boundary, and to give yourself some safety and some protection against people that might try to gaslight you or are just being disrespectful, Go grab my Creating and Clarifying Your Boundary PDF at AaronAndersonTheTraumaCoach.com. And while you're there, let's schedule a call with me. Come have a chat with me so that way I can really, really help you master this particular skill, creating boundaries, clarifying the boundary, communicating that boundary. And so that way I can also help you have relationships that show up to support you, cherish you, and love you. And find out what else we can do. Like, what is it that we really need? How can we have our own backs, right? 
And I'll get into like how we can take back our control um, in just a little bit uh, further into this podcast. So make sure you're paying attention for this. The second reason why uh, we feel like a failure is because we lack confidence in ourselves and our purposes. Maybe even we're not clear about what our missions and purposes are and uh, who we are. That can lead to a definite feeling of failure. We might know like a few different pieces and and we're we're grasping at them and we're starting to kind of put this together. But until we truly, truly know ourselves and you'll know yourself when you are proud of yourself consistently. Right. This feeling of failure. never. Well, I wouldn't say never. It does come up with really, really confident people who know their mission, who know who they are and things like that. But it, it's not like a failure of um, oh, I should just give up. There's no point uh, like and it doesn't lead to despair. It leads to curiosity is what it does to a truly confident person. Um, when we're like, oh, I totally botched that, right? <laughs> like, oh, I didn't do that well at all. Um, we tend to say, well, number one, is it important enough for me to study this and figure out how I can do this better? And then two, if the answer is yes, we go out and study it and figure out how we can do it better. So for example, for me, I am a really, really good artist. I'm a really, really good singer. I get asked to sing in a lot of different places throughout the state, actually, and um, in a lot of different for a lot of different groups. And it's fun. I love it. Right. And I'm really confident in these areas. But when it comes to sports. Oh, my gosh, you guys, I stink. At sports, I am not confident at all in sports, right? Um, I remember playing volleyball uh, with my sisters-in-law, and bless their bless their hearts. Like, can I just shout out for them for just a second because they were so awesome just to invite me. Um, but instead of like, I had no idea what I was doing, and so like, the ball would go behind me. Um. I I even hit one of my sister-in-laws, I think, in the head one time accidentally with the ball because I had no idea how to direct it, no idea how to serve it, no idea how to hit it. And I was a large reason why we consistently lost the games. But um, I also knew that it was important to my sister's-in-law to, to win these games and I wanted to show up for them. So I had to work harder than what they did to improve even just the littlest bit. Enough to where we weren't consistently losing every single time. But I'm still not a great player, right? I'm still not super confident in that. And it, it, a large part of that, I think, is just because it, it's it's not really my thing. But I totally enjoy being with my sisters-in-law. I love them with all my heart and soul. And I love the relationship that I gain with them. And they're very sporty people. So I get to dive into their world once in a while. And vice versa. They love and respect me for the my, my strengths. Right? And they're very different. But that's okay. But the truth of the matter is. I'm okay being really bad at sports and I think the reason why I'm okay with that is because I love my myself for my strengths but I can't do like I can't know my strengths if I'm consistently focused on what's wrong with me like what are my weaknesses like like are they po is it possible that they're right if somebody is sitting there tearing me down calling me names, trying to make me feel less than what I am. Am, am. Are they right? Is something wrong with me, right? And the thing is, is like, 
it's easy to believe someone when they're constantly trying to tear us down because our brains are wired actually to believe more of the negative than what they actually are the positive. And the reason why they are is because we're also spiritual beings. We are created to improve, to progress, to do better. And if there's a flaw, we want to fix it. But it becomes overwhelming when we see flaw after flaw after flaw after flaw, and we focus on those things instead of our strengths, instead of the things that we're actually really, really good at. And I've heard people who who get stuck in this this feeling of failure and then this feeling of despondence say that they're not good at anything and that there's no purpose to their life anymore. And that's not true. What that is a what that is is it's someone who is experiencing uh, that lack of confidence and not really looking at their strengths, not really congratulating themselves for their works of art and their good intentions, their their successes, actually. Because there's really, honestly, like if you sit back and you you really look at your life, there really is more successes than failures. Every single day is a success. Sometimes even just getting out of bed is a success. Brushing our teeth is a success. Uh, making sure we've cooked our breakfast is a success. Um, sometimes, like like that's all simple successes and yes we want to build up to bigger successes right but we can't do that if we believe we're a failure it doesn't work again people don't behave above their self-belief they don't progress above their self-belief and so when we show ourselves that we're a failure of course we're going to feel broken Um. We also have conscience built into us, and is when something is going wrong with our relationships, we want to fix it. We want to know if something is wrong with us um, so we can change it. And we want to trust the person that we love to tell us, honestly, if something is amiss, because that helps us, again, feel that sense of safety but the problem is, is when somebody is negative and toxic, they will rob you of your sense of self-trust. See, per- someone who really actually is trustworthy will teach you to keep your self-trust. They'll encourage you to trust yourself. They will encourage you to see your successes because that's what somebody who loves you does. But if all they do is focus on maybe your weaknesses and how you're not good at something or they they constantly are tearing you down that is a person that you need to be very very weary like leery I'm sorry leery of and um someone who tears you down wants something out of you that's the honest to gosh truth and it's usually not something good They are there to manipulate you because manipulation always leads to negativity. And it's a chronic negativity. Um, And we tend to believe that our experiences that are affirmed to us over and over and over again. Um, Life reflected back at us, right? If somebody is going to consistently tell us that the fence is green and somebody else comes by and says that the fence is green and somebody else comes by and says the fence is green. Pretty soon we're going to call that color green. We learn from other people. And even if that fence is white, you're going to call it green. We are herd animals. And so we tend to lean towards the herd mentality. 
we want belonging, right? And so because of that, we tend to believe experiences that are reaffirmed to us over and over and over again, even though they might not necessarily be true. Oftentimes, especially if you're in a negative relationship, experiences that are reaffirmed to us over and over and over again really aren't about you. They're about the other person and their emotional uh, hangups, their emotional immaturity and their emotional discordance with themselves. You just are in the way. That's it. Number three, we want to hope again and see lasting change. We know that we are inherently the only person that can change our lives for the better. Um, and like I said earlier, it's it's just literally part of our spiritual DNA. Because we're spiritual beings, we are universal beings. We were created from love. We want to create with love. And through creation of love, we, we do see that hope and we do see that lasting change. And so we are desperate to create those kinds of things. So we try to people please. We try to make ourselves less than and put somebody else above us. Um, and we literally give our control over to people on a subconscious level. I, like none of, none of this is conscious, but it's our subconscious that controls our behavior more than anything. Okay. Um, someone who is actually consciously uh, manipulating someone else. Um, that, that person is quite sick, right? But most of the time, it's actually a subconscious uh, problem um, because it's our fears that are doing the talking over our faiths. And you've heard me say this too, faith and fear cannot exist together in the same hemisphere. So it's really important, therefore, that we live by faith over the fear and someone again who lives by faith faith in themselves faith in their ability to make things better faith in their ability to make decisions that are going to improve their lives that is a person that isn't going to feel so much like a failure um we often wonder why nothing is going right in our lives and our relationships but it's not always necessarily our fault. You have other people that are really, really having struggles around you too. And sometimes their struggles land on you, right? But then we take it on because we have our own emotional struggles, our own emotional turmoil. And we believe this at, to be something that's true. And the more that we view a lie, as truth, the more we are grasping for hope and positive change. Um, and the only thing that maybe we did wrong was, was to give up our power and our voice in some way because we valued, again, the relationship we have with them over our sanity and over ourself. We literally throw ourselves under the bus just to make someone else feel important or, or good enough or, or as good as or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's never a good position. You get into relationships um, to be an equal with someone. And so if you are literally devaluing yourself to be in a relationship with someone, that needs to stop very quickly. Um. And again, like I said, these are all subconscious behaviors in an attempt to create inner peace within ourselves and acceptance from other people around us. It's so important for us to have that sense of belonging. And so we tend to prioritize other people over ourselves, but that will never lead to belonging. Belonging is literally somebody prioritizing you as much as they do themselves. And so if you want belonging, you too have to prioritize yourself as much as you want someone else to prioritize you. Having safety is good. Desiring happiness of someone else 
is really good. Um, to love is good. To have love in our lives is good. Having hope and positive change is good. But we tend to feel like a failure when we allow the negative voices to talk louder than our own voice. I talk about this as um, the shoulder angel, shoulder devil, right? I love the Emperor's New Groove, Kronk. He's just awesome. Like, that was a very brilliantly crafted character. And he's got this shoulder angel and the shoulder devil that are sitting there talking to him. And it's quite hilarious, honestly. But we have the same thing. We might not see them necessarily, but we have good and evil consistently pulling at us at all times. And we tend to listen to the negative, that that adversarial voice, because it's a loud sucker. And that adversarial voice is talking to other adversarial voices from other people trying to affirm to you that uh, like what it wants you to believe. So it keeps you in a hopeless state, keeps you lost, keep you, keeps you feeling like that failure. This is why it's so important to get organized. This is how like like there's actually more than the, more than this just getting organized like we're going to get into this but we create safety we create confidence hope belonging peace positive lasting change without giving up our agency by listening to this other voice the angel voice and the angel voice is a very quiet voice it takes you actually getting very intentional remember that's that first pillar to actually hear it because he's not going to speak very loudly because he or she, depending what you are, what your angel is, right? They want you to believe them more and they're going to have a hard time telling you or getting you to believe them if they're going to yell at you as loud as the negative voice. And so if we're going to tune into the positive and that angel voice, number one, you've got to get organized. And I'm not talking about like necessarily organizing your environment, right? You guys, like I I love my house. I love my kids, but sometimes my house is an absolute zoo. Okay. I have six kids that live here from the ages of 16 to two. And my two-year-old, she's adorable. She's the sweetest thing ever. Like, you just look into those big brown eyes and you just want to, like, snuggle her. And those cute, cute, cute little curls, right? But she is an absolute tornado. I can clean one area and get it really, really, really super good. And I go into another area and I come back. And find out that she's dropped ice cream all over my couch. Like, and I, like, I keep the ice cream in the freezer. I really do. But she gets up on the chair. She climbs up there. She reaches out and she dumps ice cream all over my couch, right? Or all over my carpet. Sometimes it's an absolute zoo at my house, right? But I'm not necessarily talking about that type of organization. That comes after first. When we organize our time, our thoughts, and our emotions, then our environment will focus, will will follow, sorry, will follow that type of organization first. And the reason why this is, is because, again, it gets down into that intentionality, right? Things don't just randomly happen to us if we're not being intentional enough to give ourselves some of our own time to really check in with our thoughts and our emotions and to get these things organized we're going to feel chaotic and that chaos feeds into this feeling of failure okay um so looking at time number one if you want to to get more organized in your time, 
go grab my freebie on Aaron Anderson, the trauma um, And it is the organization freebie. And I can't remember how I exactly named that. But if you go into the freebies tab, it's right there. So go grab that and start organizing your time. Um, so that way you have time for yourself every single day. Right. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you have time to really think, to reflect, to ask yourself some really, really good questions. And we're going to get into that in just a minute, too. But if you remember um, this five step thought process, our thoughts lead to our emotions, which lead to our actions, which leads, leads to our results. And so we have to get really, really clear with what our thoughts are that are creating the results that keep showing up for us. If we believe that someone else is more important or that we can't survive without them or that we owe them something, right? That can be very dangerous. As a matter of fact, that is a very dangerous thing. People that are healthy don't feel like you owe them anything. They just want to show up for you because they love you. They like being around you. And so to them, you are a source of energy to them that they don't have to siphon from you. That they get to give and receive with you. Number two. Stop giving your voice and your power over to other people, period. Even someone who is good, they don't need your voice and your power. That is meant to stay with you at all times. Ask yourself, getting into those questions, right? Getting into this time and really organizing our time, our thoughts, our energy. Why do I give this person so much power? What am I trying to get from them by giving this to them? Number one, we know they don't deserve it. Even if they're a fabulous person, nobody deserves your voice and your power. It wasn't given to them in the first place. It should stay with you. So in truth, it's really not fair to give it away. And even if somebody demands it from you, it's not fair to you. It's not fair to them to give it up. They already have a voice. They already have their own power. If they choose to misuse it and abuse it, that is on them. But you don't have to be a victim to it at all. So if you feel like you're constantly being drawn into these things, why are you giving this person so much power? And ask yourself this question without judgment, with just the desire to listen. Remember our boundaries? Listening boundary. You need to listen to yourself. That's so important. And you need to make sure you have time to do it. Um, and you want to ask yourself this question often. Because just asking it once, you're going to get some wisdom. But if you're consistently asking yourself this question over and over and over, it's a really good question. You're going to get deeper and deeper and deeper into the roots of what's going on. Number three, set really, really solid boundaries. We just talked about the listening boundary, right? Listen to yourself. Ask yourself, how can I treat myself better with more love, compassion, forgiveness, and friendship? How can I be my own best friend? What does a best friend look like to me? And how can I show up that way for myself? Well, a best friend listens. They don't talk down to you. They're not derogatory in any way. And again, you want to ask yourself this question often so that way the answer becomes more clear. What is a best friend to you? How can I show up this way? And do consistent check-ins with that question so that way you can really evaluate how you're treating yourself. You can't have somebody treat you better than what you're already treating yourself. It doesn't work. Now, some people 
who are just fabulous and really, really good hearted are going to treat you well. Yes. But on a consistent like like to be consistently around you and to share of that love and that energy. That's going to be a bit of a different story, because if you are consistently tearing yourself down, you kind of tend to become a bit of an energy vampire. And again, I say that with love and no judgment. Right. Oftentimes people are totally oblivious to this. But. We're so desperate for love, belonging and attention and best friendness that when somebody comes along and is kind, we kind of tend to smother them a little bit because we're so desperate for it without realizing that this is something we don't have to get from other people first. But this is something that we can completely and utterly give ourselves first. So some of the boundaries you might want to set with yourself are, number one. I don't speak negatively about myself to myself or anyone else. I'm not going to think negatively about myself to myself or anyone else. I'm going to search for my strengths. I'm going to really focus on them. I'm going to congratulate myself for them. Hello, good and good. Hello to confidence. Goodbye to failure, right? Hello to success. Goodbye to failure. Um, I'm going to go to bed early. And get up early so that way I have quiet time for me, just me. I'm going to get my time organized, right? I'm going to give myself forgiveness when I feel like I haven't met my goal. Um, I'm going to ask myself some really good questions. I'm just going to do some checking in with me to see if there's something that I need to forgive myself for, that I need to love myself better for. Um I don't allow someone else to do my thinking for me. Those are all great boundaries, all amazing boundaries. And they'll come up if you're consistently listening to yourself. If you're feeling like a consistent failure or or like there's no hope, this is actually also a sign that you're out of alignment with yourself. That you're not actually setting good boundaries with yourself. So how do can you and what boundary do you need to set with yourself to tell yourself to stop abusing you to stop betraying you okay ask yourself some of those questions um boundaries are all about how you choose to respond to situations because that response teaches other people how to treat you too See, if I feel like I'm a fantastic human, I'm going to treat myself like a fantastic human. I'm going to do fantastic human things. And when failure comes my direction, it's okay. It's a step to success. It's not a sign that you're in the wrong space necessarily. It simply is a step to success. And if you are in the wrong space, you just simply get to readjust and Get clear on what is the right space for us to be in. This is going to mean that you take some time for yourself. You're going to go over. And again, like I said, take time. I can't emphasize that enough. Take time for you. Go over situations that you have already been struggling with. Um, Maybe currently in the past. Right. And. Step away from the self-judgment, step away from the criticism, step away from anything like that, even for the other person. And simply ask yourself, how could I have responded to that situation with more emotional maturity? How can I have improved that situation with a boundary? And sit there and kind of watch that play out the situation in your head. Because you'll notice you'll notice that you're on the right path because it doesn't matter about how the other person is going to respond. It is all about how you respond to the situation. And if you're responding well, even in your own mind and seeing this play over and over and over in your head, your confidence is going to come up and you're going to start feeling like that fantastic human. Okay, fourth one, get support, get support, get support. 
whether that be through a therapist and or or a coach guys um therapists are really really great for certain situations coaches are really really great for certain situations it's actually a completely different craft okay however a coach is going to be very very specific with your goal um and help you achieve a certain goal so if you're saying hey i want better relationships um i want to have more confidence i want to stop the gaslighting i want to create boundaries right those are all fantastic things that a coach can work with you on but a, a therapist a really good therapist i should say so make sure you get a good one um they will help you with the mental side of things um, a lot, too, um, which does help bring up the goal a little bit more. But um, a coach is going to be a little bit more focused on your your timetable. Right. And so they're going to give you like really, really specific things to do, whereas a therapist is going to help you like really, really rethink the situation a bit more. Okay. Um, so that's kind of the two differences between coaching and therapy, but um, get support. <laughs> I offer support. You guys, if you're someone who is really ready to take some serious action, schedule a call with me. Seriously. I would love to talk to you. And I'm going to be honest with you, too. I'm not going to try to sell you something. If you aren't a great fit for me and, and I'm not a great fit for you, I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to tell you, you know, this is probably something you're going to need some therapy for. And I'll recommend some really fantastic therapists uh, that I personally work with. And they do an amazing job. But if you're somebody that is really ready to get the coaching, I will talk to you about how we can work together. And if that's something that is of interest to you, there's never any pressure. There's never any judgment. Um, it's literally to assess the situation to see if we would be a good fit and for me to give you a few tools to help you along your journey. Right. That is what those calls are for. Um, but I've had people come onto the calls before that get real, like allow distractions, get really, really distracted. They don't take what I say seriously. Um, they argue with me on those things. And, and so if that's somebody that, if you're somebody that's going to do those things, no judgment again, but the, these calls are not for you. These are calls for someone who's really seriously looking for answers and is really ready to get their to do whatever it takes to get that result. They're done waiting to have what it is that they are truly wanting to have the boundaries, to have the relationships, to feel confident, to stop feeling like a failure. Right. They're really ready for that change. I'm happy to support you. So I'm going to tell you guys, if that's you, go click on the link in the description below, whether you're on YouTube or whether you're listening to this. There's a description. And in that description is a link to schedule a call with me. And I'd love to chat with you and help you out in the very best way possible. And I'd, I'd love to meet you anyway. So go schedule that call. OK, get some support, get support. And if that's not for you, reach out to a therapist somehow but these podcasts are great um getting on youtube can be great uh jimmy on relationships he's a fantastic youtuber that i totally recommend for you guys the thing is though is it's not individual support the reason why working with someone on a on an individual basis is so powerful is because it gets tailored to you specifically. So this is why I say reach out, get support. Okay, do what it takes to get that support you need. All right, my loves, I hope this is helpful to you guys. Um, 
there's never any reason why failure should lead to hopelessness. And if it does, and you're feeling like there's just no point in continuing, or you're g- even getting little hints of that feeling, okay, um, and feeling that despondency, there's no reason why it should. Check in with yourself. Give yourself some grace. Give yourself some love. and. Just ask yourself, what is one thing I can be consistent with today? Start creating some different habits that you can be consistent with. And I've given you a list of some really good ones, right? And the more we start creating different habits for ourselves, the more we start having our own back, learning that we can trust ourselves, that we're going to do the right thing, and we start to see really, really lasting change. All right, my loves, hope this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you next week on the other side. Bye, guys. Okay, so I've got a question for you. Have you joined my free Facebook group or Instagram page yet? If you haven't, Go and do that. And this is the reason why. I always post my freebies, updated information, and all kinds of goodies for my community in that page. I'm also really active. I post videos. I answer questions. So if you guys really, really want to get in and interact with me, go like me on Facebook. Go join my group, The Other Side of the Struggle, Healing from Betrayal Trauma. Come find me on Instagram, Erin Anderson, Betrayal Trauma Coach. And come follow me because I always have something good there just for you, my audience. And I love connecting with you there. I also post any time that I have groups going on. I talk sometimes about my programs. So if you guys are interested in working with me or even just following me and getting as much free content as you possibly can, go hang out in my group. Go connect with the ladies that are there. Um, Also come and join Immune and Unashamed uh, for those married couples that are following me because in that group, me and my business partner, Kaisen Kid, are also talking and offering some great content. Hey guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today and listening in on this podcasting episode. Don't forget to tune in next week. It's going to